And welcome to another episode of Seasoned, where we give you top tips to live your life to the fullest as we age to perfection like a fine wine. And I'm Kat Ray, Miss Senior Universe. And I'm also wearing, again, a fabulous David Tupaz design. What do you think? It's summer. It's spring. After spring, it's, I love it. Today, I'm bringing back Michael Bennett. You've got to listen to this. Author, speaker, producer, travel expert, and so much more to share more about his new book on Alzheimer's and how his entire life changed in order to care for his mother and how he's personally dealing and coping with the changes. Also, as a travel expert, he's going to share some tips for us seniors as we head into our travel plans for the summer months. So stay tuned because I'm also bringing back our go-to gal, Nina Ten, senior community events and volunteer opportunities. So also joining us today is Di Redmond Wolfgram, owner broker of Windermere Real Estate. And she is gonna fill us in on special senior real estate opportunities, activities around Las Vegas Valley, and her top tips about how to buy real estate as a senior, and some moving tips as well, so stay tuned. We have a lot to talk about today on Seasoned. <laughs> You know, I'm so glad you're still with us. I had to bring back Michael Bennett to share more about the issue of Alzheimer's and his new book, Rusty's War, A Battle of the Mind, and how his life totally changed when he had to take care of his mother. So, Michael, welcome back. Thank you for having me. And uh, let's start where we left off at your last interview to bring the audience a little bit up to date okay. here. This is, an, this is an issue that we're all dealing with more and more um, but uh, let's, uh, how old is your mother, first of all? She's 77. 77. Yeah. But you were telling me it's a huge women's issue, Alzheimer's is. Yes, two-thirds of the people who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's to date are women. Uh, the scientific evidence in terms of why that's happening is still out. Uh, we know one thing for sure, we are living longer, so the idea that we can actually uh, uh, take on or contract Alzheimer's is definitely a very real thing but you know the scientists still don't know if it has anything to do with hormones and childbirth and well it's like hereditary that, but, it's, but it's out there and it's uh, hereditary to a point they say that the odds are if you have a, a direct family member who's had Alzheimer's your risk is exceptionally higher than anybody else's in society but there's not a specific gene type that you can actually test for now, there is one gene, I saw a story on 60 Minutes about a year ago where there's this family in Colombia and everybody in the family had Alzheimer's. Uh. But that gene doesn't exist in every one. Right. But this particular family had it all and they had what they call early onset Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's before the age of 60. Some of their family members were getting Alzheimer's in their 30s and 40s. Okay, did you hear that? Because today I want to ask, I'm going to ask some really hard questions. These are the questions, it's not soft coded. This is what someone has to deal with when they're loved one has Alzheimer's, whether it's a spouse or a mate or a mother or a father. Michael, how did your, how long ago was your mom diagnosed? My mother was diagnosed in April of 2013, so this is year four for us. Now what happened and how did you have to change your life? At first I didn't change very much. Honestly, I think my love for my mother was kind of hiding what I needed to be doing in terms of getting set up to take care of her. I guess I was in denial. Now was she in Las Vegas and you were She was actually here in Las Vegas. Okay. I was living in California. Okay, at the time. so they weren't even in the same city. Right. So, go ahead. And as I found out later, uh, I came home to visit my mother for the Christmas holiday and I knew something was wrong. What? 
uh, I started noticing like laundry not being done, just piles of clothes piled up on the floor. The house looked like a tornado hit. And if you know anything about my mother, that doesn't stand. <laughs> uh, you know, her, uh, her taking care of herself, just the little things, the hair being dirty, not bathing on a regular basis, everything. So was I want off. the audience huh? to know what what are some of the signs to look for. Uh, for us, it was apathy, uh, not caring. There was a certain amount of fear that my mother never had before. Mm. She started being afraid of everything. She wouldn't go outside of the house at all for anything. Wow. And keep in mind, when I got back here, the month she was diagnosed, she was still driving a car. So she gave this appearance that she was getting along just fine. How was she? T did she know something was wrong? She knew something was wrong. Did she tell you something no. is wrong? She never said a word. My mother is probably the best CIA operative you would ever <laughs> find. She has this ability to keep things inside of herself and never share. So it how with did anybody. it come out where she finally said, "I need help," or you said, "You need help"? I mean, there's that moment of truth that you have to. Actually, have. she brought it to my attention. She had been trying to get her primary care physician to. Get give her a referral to the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Brain Institute here in Las Vegas for a year. And the uh, her primary care physician thought it was the rants of just a senior citizen who at the time was only 72. Wow. But when I saw it firsthand, I took up the cause of trying to get her a uh, referral. So we got rid of that primary care physician, got a second one. Oh, Same boy. thing with this primary care physician. Finally, we hit on the third primary care physician who had a relative who had Alzheimer's. She got it immediately. She made a phone call the same afternoon while we were sitting in her office, and I had an appointment a month later. You know, I'm so, going to rush you along because we're running out right. of time again. <laughs> I've got to have you back for more of this because it's in his book. He deals with all of the hard issues. So financial, so you had to move. Yes, I had to move had back to move? here. I had not worked in almost two years. Oh. Uh, the financial cost of Alzheimer's, just the care part of it alone, exceeds my mother's retirement income and her Social Security by several thousand dollars a month. So what does she do? How do you handle this? It, it's difficult because the way I, you know, because I haven't been able to work, I've actually drained all of my savings caring for her, and I've drained hers as well. Okay, I'm going to stop you. We've got okay. 30 seconds. Can you believe that? I've got to bring you back for more. Okay. Um, in his book, he addresses all of these hard issues, the financial issues. Yes. What do people do that don't have insurance? What's going to happen to them? He's got, uh, uh, he references, it gives you some suggestions in your book. Yes. What to do, where to go, how to handle it. Right. Yeah, from the financial standpoint, I have all of that in. I actually was very honest with our situation because I wanted people to understand that this thing, this Alzheimer's, is the most expensive disease in the world to take care of and manage, and no one knows it. We look at cancer and HIV and everything that goes in with that, but this has to be managed. My and mother's going, going to live 10 more years. <laughs> okay, so now we got 10 more years of costs right. and life changes right. and, and personal care for caregivers. I hate this. We have to wrap this up. Rusty's War, A Battle of the Mind. It is out today. It's on Amazon.com. Where else can they find Amazon, it? Amazon, Barnes & Nobles has picked it up. Uh, iBooks, I know it's out there. And the digital version of it, for those who are digital readers, will be uh, out next week. Michael Bennett, don't go away. We've got more with Michael as he's going to talk to us about senior travel. And yes, he's a travel <laughs> expert also. So stay tuned. Okay, we are back with Michael Bennett, who is also a travel expert, believe it or not. And he was appointed to Brand USA as part of the Travel Promotion Act. He currently serves on the board for the Travel Professionals of Color and is one of America's foremost travel experts, at least I think so, and that's important today. So anyway, thanks for staying with us. So Mike. Yes. We talked about Alzheimer's earlier. Now we're going to switch to travel, and this is really one of your businesses and how yes. you make money to yes. pay, help pay for the Alzheimer's care. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> so I want to get, ask you three top tips for seniors traveling. My first tip actually applies to everyone, but I actually think it's more suited for seniors, and that's to travel during what I call shoulder season. 
it's uh, basically from about mid-April to June, and again in September and October. Why shoulder season? Say that again. Mid-April to June. April to early June, and then again in September, September or October. September or October, okay. Several reasons for that. Number one, hotel rooms and airlines are usually cheaper. Number two is you don't have to fight with the families who are all traveling simultaneously. You get more attention to yourself and your needs and your care. If you travel during the summertime, regardless of whether you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, because people forget if you go to Australia or parts of southern Latin America, the seasons are opposite. So the weather also works to your advantage. Uh, going to Europe is especially important during shoulder season as the weather is getting warmer, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you're also able to take advantage of the cheap travel deals. So I always tell people, if you need to go someplace, go during shoulder season. Avoid summer and avoid winter. And at all costs, if you happen to catch yourself at shoulder season and there's an event going on, like maybe the Olympics or something, don't go because you're not going to get a hotel room anyway. <laughs> well, also during the summertime, families go on vacation with their kids. So right. there's usually a lot of kids around. And if you love that thing, that's great. But if you don't, it's not. So you have to keep that in mind as well. I Absolutely. Think. And I know a lot of seniors like to do things with like cruising and things like that. And, you know, you have a tendency not to find as many children on a cruise ship in May, April and May as opposed to, you know, June, July and August. Right. So, you know, that would be my tip number one. Number two, for seniors in particular, this is very important, is medications. Ah, have listen your, up. Have listen your up. medications filled before you leave in their entirety. Have, if you're going to be out of the country or traveling for 30 days, have a 30-day supply. Mm. Now, here's something a lot of people don't know. If you happen to run out of medications, let's say you're in Europe. I'm on Lipitor. Uh, for high cholesterol. Well, the Europeans don't recognize Lipitor. That's a brand name. You need to ask your doctor for mm. the generic name, which I believe is an astrovastatin is what they call it in its generic form. Have him write that down. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's a long-winded name, but you know, you, when you need those medications and you can't get them, mm. and now in Europe they may fill some medications and sometimes they won't, depending on what the medication wow. is. So you need to have a long list of these medications from your doctors. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Seniors leave their medicines at home and then have to fight to get the medicines when they're on the road. Wow. It is awful, especially if it's like high blood pressure or something that's really vital to their survival and they don't have enough to last during the trip. How about going down into Mexico? That's close by. Do they, is that easier to obtain down no. there? Or it, no, it's equally as daunting. Uh. Now, the flip side to that is in Mexico, a lot of the uh, prescription drugs that we buy here in the United States are available over the counter in Mexico. Right. Um, and they're, they're ac they actually they are the same drug. They're coming from the same manufacturers. <laughs> just in Mexico, <laughs> you can buy it over the counter, and you can't do it here in the United States. Okay. So tip number three, because we're running out of time again. Number, it goes tip so fast. number three is travel insurance, especially for oh. seniors, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of travel insurance companies, and there's probably a dozen of them out there. They have. Uh, 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 waivers for pre-existing conditions so that you can get covered. The number one thing you need to look for in those travel insurance plans is evacuation insurance. If you happen to be on a cruise ship and a medical emergency hits and you have to be evacuated someplace at the next port of call, you need to have, make sure that that's covered. Wow. It is essential that you have that covered. Or if you travel to remote regions and there's no hospitals around. Now, there's a downside to this. A lot of times are, these are reimbursable expenses. In other words, you file your claim and get reimbursed after the fact. So you need to plan for this and understand that if you get stuck someplace in the middle of nowhere, you're going to need some help getting to a doctor that can actually handle your condition. And in a lot of places, if you're in a foreign country where they don't speak English, they will actually connect you with an English-speaking doctor so that you can have the conversation back and forth. Very, very, very important. Well, so if they have health insurance, doesn't that cover that? No. And that's the other thing you need to be aware of. Medicaid, you know, Medicare in most countries does not work. Health insurance is a case-by-case -case basis. You need to check your own health insurance policy to make sure that it covers you for international travel. If it doesn't, then you need to buy an international travel insurance policy to cover you. Wow, and we don't, we don't tell them where to go for their insurance, but that's like, like a traveler's insurance or some corner, independent yep. company of... The best place to find some of those is go to the AARP's website. They have a oh, whole okay. list of not only 
places to travel, but they also have a whole list of insurance companies that they will address all these issues. AARP, that, that works for me, yeah. or AMAC is another yes, one another, to go. Correct. Okay, we got to wrap it up. It goes so fast. I hate this. God, we got to have him back again. What do you think? Yeah? Anyway, there's so much to talk about with Michael. We'll just have to have him back and stay tuned for more of Seasons. Thank you <laughs> Thank again you. <laughs> Thank for you being so much. here. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> We're back again, and this time I'm bringing back Di Redmond Wolfgram, broker owner of Windermere Real Estate, and her office specializes in seniors. We absolutely do. And she's one of our biggest Miss Senior USA Universe supporters. I had Thank to bring you. her back to give us her top three tips for seniors investing in real estate and moving <laughs> and, and give us some updates on taxes and so forth. So welcome back, Di. Thank you, Kat. So Appreciate glad you're you here. Me. Thank you. So let's start off. Do seniors have any major tax advantages here in Nevada. We're fortunate. In Nevada, our retirement income is not taxed. Social Security is not taxed. Your retirement check from your uh, previous occupation is not taxed here, and so that's a huge plus. We also have a lot of, uh, we have no huge property taxes compared to a lot of states. So when you move to Nevada, you've got a couple of advantages. You've got your retirement not taxed, you've got no state income tax, and your property taxes are very low. And he inheritance tax also? Inheritance tax <coughs> is non-existent here. There is a small a portion of it for federal taxes, but not state. Okay. So good. Any other major federal or state benefits for the seniors that you can think of off the top of your head? I can't think of anything more than uh, the taxes that we That's already ba <laughs> <laughs> we already have that uh, very good uh, well, I think we were talking a little bit earlier about renting there's help. So I want to ask you, what if they cannot afford a single family home? Give me some options for folks. Right. If you cannot afford to purchase a single family home or a condo or anything, there are rentals in our city that take advantage of, if you're a senior, you'll get some of your rent supplemented. So there's always an option if you can't afford to buy, you can rent and our rental prices are quite good right now and if you can't afford that rent there's senior housing where they do get supplement to their income so that they can pay the rent. Wow now how do they find out about that because her company Windermere yes. uh, Windermere specializes in property management as well we do. so um, how do they find out about something like that? We have several property managers that can help you with that there's different websites to go to but if you get yourself a good property manager from Windermere <laughs> they can assist you with uh, finding out the best uh, place for you to live and the right price. And not only that, if you have property to rent, mm -hmm. contact her office. They're, got it. they're yeah. one of the top top around. Um, my, I, wa I wanted you to give me, and I told her this before, give me the top three tips for buying seniors, buying right. real estate, uh, investing in real estate, and or moving. It's summertime, people are moving. So what's your, what's your first tip? Well, first to surround yourself with a, a very good real estate professional that can help direct you in all paths. You also need to talk to title companies that can help you when you do purchase your property. The second thing is to do some research on the areas that you want to be in. In our a city, there's lots of different areas for seniors to invest or live. So you want to, you can do re, uh, research on the internet, but your real estate professional uh, people that have perhaps lived here a while would know that too. And, and don't always put your eggs all in one basket. If you have uh, money to invest, you might want to invest perhaps in a condo, perhaps some in single family. There are other properties also, vacant land, that you can uh, invest in now. Perhaps that will be developed later. What about senior care facilities, living facilities? What do you if you're looking for uh, assisted living, we have a ton of that. If you're looking for, we also have, um, uh, I want to say, nursing facilities. We have life care facilities here where you can start as an assisted living, moving into a more assisted nursing facility. We have everything here in Las Vegas and in the metro area that any senior would need or want. Well, how about not just Las Vegas, because we do have people watching that are not in Las Vegas. Ah. So uh, they need to do their own research wherever yes. they are. There are areas at Reno, there's a lot of advantages throughout this state that you can uh, choose from, from smaller communities to large communities. So number one, get a good professional. Yes. And I want to talk about that a little bit. 
because a lot of people call somebody and they get their time and this person spends days and weeks with and then they say I don't like that so then they change it to another person and so tell me in the industry how is that uh, taken well what you want to do is to talk to different people that you know that have been here and then they can usually recommend someone before you start purchasing and making offers get with one person that can help you that you will stick with because when you start changing uh, different people here and different right. people there I don't think you'll get the level of service that you really need and if you stay with one person they know your history from yep. the beginning to the yes. end and you change to a person they may show you with the same property exactly. then you've got a then you've got a real you've problem. Got a problem yes you've got a real problem yeah. so before, get someone you trust get someone that's got a similar personality and someone you like to work with. and someone you trust yes. can they interview different absolutely. agents absolutely you need to there interview you different agents call on the phone uh, listen to what they have to offer and then that way you'll be able to make the best selection okay so and I've been a real estate broker for 30 years <laughs> uh -huh. so yes interview agents find someone yes. you can trust call a company that's reputable and that is specializes in what you're looking for and Windermere certainly is that thank company you. here yes. thank you die for being with us Thanks a lot Kat. thanks to Don. don't go don't go away <laughs> we'll be right back there's so much to talk about <laughs> We're back with our go-to gal for senior community services, Nina Tan from Spotlight Senior Services Las Vegas. Welcome back, Nina. We're so glad you're here. Thank, Thank you, you for joining so me much. again today. And because there seems to be a theme today about Alzheimer's, we're going to be talking about Alzheimer's more mm -hmm. with Nina, the opportunities here mm -hmm. to volunteer, and some really good statistics. She just asked, uh, handed me this with the Alzheimer's Association. Mm -hmm. uh, to tell me, again, over 5 million Americans? Have, tell me what 5 million saying. Americans have been diagnosed. Um, with Alzheimer's. With Alzheimer's. Um, and um, it could be more than that, but that's what they have records of over the last years of their research. Now who are the they other part being of it, the Alzheimer's Al Association? Yeah, Alzheimer's okay. Association. Um, I'm part of the Desert Southwest chapter. Uh, we work together with them to assist families here oh. in the valley. In fact, many people that um, are affected by Alzheimer's, the family members, as well as those that are mm -hmm. diagnosed, um, don't know where to go. Um, when they first get the diagnosis, they're stunned, they don't know what to do. The first stop is the Alzheimer's Association. They exist solely to support the families. And we talked a little bit about that earlier on the show with Michael Bennett. What do you do? Where do you go? How exactly. who do you help? If you're, uh, Michael ha happened to live out of town and mm -hmm. his mother was in Las Vegas. So he literally had to move his family here to take care of her. So they help with all of that? Yes, they, they're the first stop. They provide free services and also educational programs for the families and for those that are diagnosed. How about financial so, help? Do they also help with that a little bit? That, or do we know? I am not sure if they do. Uh, if they do, they could assist you with that. Uh, you would just go to their okay. website, which is ALZ. Org. They also um, fund research, which is very important. Uh, the last uh, 10 years of research, a lot of it has been supported by the Alzheimer's Association across the nation. And they project by 2050, the year mm -hmm. 2050, 16 million. Yes, it'll triple. It'll, it'll triple. triple. Wow. And again, that's, that's a projection. It could be more. We don't know. Uh, but the most important thing right now is for education, and that's what they provide. They have two uh, programs for families. They're completely free. One is called EPIC. It's Early Stage Partners in Care. That is a program that actually is an educational program for those that have an early stage diagnosis mm -hmm. along with their caregivers together. They educate them. They also teach them how to reduce stress and distress. And they also have, um, they help you enhance your well-being, and they also help manage challenges and plan for the future, because that's the one thing that you need to know. With early stage onset, um, there's a lot involved, and education is the first key. Now, if someone is alone, mm -hmm. and they think they have Alzheimer's, if you're alone and you think you have Alzheimer's, what do they do? Uh, well, you can call them. They do free assessments, so they'll also assist you with with any kind of uh, education and um, support, family support, 
um, or Do they community have, support. They have caregivers that volunteer their time. There's all help? sorts of things, and you could just go to their website and get more more information. Um, as far as caregivers, that's probably something that you'll work together. If if you don't have family members that can assist you, your friends, make sure that people know. I think that's just to be. Um, out there in the open and let people know. People that care about you know what you're going through. The f most important thing is you're not alone. As long as you reach out to the Alzheimer's Association and there's various other organizations and charities that could assist you too that we work together with. Um, and if they contact us, we'll be happy to get you in contact with them. Very good. Also, they're saying just the cost of caring for those with Alzheimer's and other dementia is estimated to total 259 billion with a B in 2017, mm -hmm. increasing to 1.1 trillion by mid-century. That, that's crazy. It is. That's crazy. And it really is up to the families <sighs> and, and those loved ones that are assisting you know, those that are So diagnosed. I'm talking to my audience and, I, and there's a lot of people out there alone. So mm -hmm. what we suggest is to call the Alzheimer's Association Correct. or contact them, Google them, get on the internet, yeah. uh, find out how to connect with them. Mm -hmm. Their phone number is 70, for the Las Vegas area, Southern Nevada area, their office uh, number is 702-248-2770. Their website is alz.org and look up the Desert Southwest chapter. Um, also, there is a cell, there's a helpline, a toll-free helpline. Anyone with Alzheimer's, anyone that's caring for someone with Alzheimer's can call, and that's 800-272-3900. And that helpline is really And I think we're going to have that up good. on the screen, aren't we, for, for our folks at home. So please call if you even think you have a problem or if you think your loved one has a problem. This is get on it like right now get help mm -hmm. this is so important are there any volunteer opportunities that people could help out with oh yes there's many volunteer opportunities with the Alzheimer's Association you could find that information again on their website but there are two events coming up one is the longest day that's a special day that they do on June 21st there's and also where is that and how do they find out about that? They we gotta just wrap go on the, it up. We're yeah, go on the time. website. And then um, at the end of the year on October twenty eighth, uh -huh. Saturday is the annual walk to end Alzheimer's. That will be at Town Square this year, and um, that's October 28th. Go to the website, it has all the information there. Go to the website, volunteer, get out there, do the walk on the mm -hmm. town square. When is that, October 28th, you said? October 28th, it's on a Saturday. Uh -huh. About 3,000 people come out for that event, and there's also a huge resource event, too. So if you need to get connected with those that provide services, for, uh, for families, Very everything's good. there in one There place. it is, go for it. Thank you, Nina. Stay tuned, Thank we got you. more to come. Well, that ends our show for now. My senior moment is, it's summertime. Time for sunblock. If worn, most skin cancers would be prevented. And remember, tanning beds are cancer machines. So you take care of you this summer, get some good sunblock, put it on in the morning and enjoy your day. I'm Kat Ray and I'll see you next time.